So we've been working through the total Lagrangian formulation. We've developed all the governing equations. Uh, we've, we've talked about uh, various features of the solution. What we want to do now is begin the process of discretizing it so we can develop and find an element solution for it. So as with your um, introductory class, I think, uh, in order to discretize this, you needed to put it in weak form. We're going to have to do the same thing. Um, the, so, so what we want to talk about in this lecture is getting the total Lagrangian formulation into its weak form. Now, what we've done in the past, at least in, when I teach the introductory class, is we use the Galerkin uh, method to get a weak form. Uh, we're going to do something a little different uh, for this particular lecture. We're going to use the principle of virtual work to get into a weak form. Okay, so um, let me just write that down. So to discretize the momentum equation, it must be put into its weak form. So here we're going to use the principle of virtual work to obtain the weak form, but it's going to give us an equivalent formulation to the Galerkin method. Okay, so here uh, we use um, so here we're going to use the principle of virtual work to get the weak form. And this is actually an equivalent uh, formulation to the Galerkin weak form. We're not going to get a different solution by doing it this way. Um, so let's go ahead and begin with the strong form. And what's the strong form? That's just the momentum equation uh, and its traction boundary conditions. So let me remind you what that was in case you forgot. That's the quantity A0 times P, where P was the nominal stress, the partial with respect to X, plus rho naught A0 times B, right? B is a, a body force per unit um, mass minus rho naught a naught uh, times u double dot, right, uh, is going to be equal to zero, right? That's our, that's our momentum equation. Let's call that equation one. So how did you get the, your, your weak form when you worked the Galerkin method? Well, you multiplied by some function. You called it a weight function um, and integrated. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply it. We're going to call it a test function, but it's the same principle. We're going to multiply it by some function and integrate. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Integral of now our domain from xa to xb. Uh, the, our test function is going to, it's going to be, uh, we'll call it delta u, which will be some function of x, right? That's our test function. Now multiplied by this whole quantity. So a naught p with partial with respect to x plus rho naught a naught b minus rho naught a naught u double dot dx uh, is equal to zero. Let's call that equation two. What are we going to require of our test function? Well, the same things that we required of our weight function. Okay, so the test function delta u uh, are, are going to be assumed to be as follows. Number one, it's going to be sufficiently smooth and have any derivatives that it needs for our, for our purposes. Okay. Number two, we're going to require, just like we did with our weight function, that delta u is going to be equal to zero anywhere where we have a um, prescribed displacement boundary condition, right? So this is the, this is the equivalent of saying we know that displacement is a primary variable. When we have a boundary condition on our primary variable, our weight function is required to be zero, right? Same, same exact uh, um, relationship there. Okay, now let's, now let's go ahead and consider the following relationship. Right, if I, uh, I look at, let's say, this first term, and I can see that maybe I want this delta u term to be inside the derivative, so I, I guess I want to 
ask the question, what if I have um, delta u times a naught times p derivative with respect to x, and that's going to be equal to just via the uh, the product rule now. That's going to be um, delta u times a naught p partial with respect to x plus delta u partial with respect to x times a naught p, right? So we can go ahead, we have this term delta ux a naught p partial with respect to x, that's this quantity here. We can solve for that in terms of these terms, okay? So that means that delta u a naught p partial with respect to x is equal to this quantity delta u a naught p partial with respect to x minus delta u with respect to x a naught p. Let's call that equation 3. Now I'm just going to substitute 3 into 2. So substituting 3 into 2, I now have the integral from x a to x b. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute my delta u term through there. Okay, so uh, this term here is, is becomes delta u a naught p partial with respect to x minus delta u partial with respect to x times a naught times p. Okay, and then I just have these other terms plus rho naught a naught b times delta u minus rho naught a naught u double dot times delta u integral dx is equal to zero. Call that equation four. Okay, so to, to take the next step, I want you to recall the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, what did that say? It said, well, if I have an integral from a to b of some function uh, derivative with respect to x dx, right, then that must be equal to f of b minus f of a, right? That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. We could write that in our terminology as f evaluated at the boundary, right? Because that's what that is. Let's call that equation five. So what I want to do now is I want to apply this to this first term in the integral. You see I have this function then with a, a derivative with respect to x. I'm going to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to it, okay? So I'm going to apply five Uh, to equation four, to the first term in the integral in equation four. So, so here's my equation now. I have integral from x a to x b. This is going to come out of the integral now. It's going to become a boundary term. So I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to write this term here as negative uh, delta u. Uh, derivative with respect to x uh, times a naught p plus rho naught a naught b times delta u minus rho naught a naught u double dot times delta u. So that quantity there, right? dx. And now I need to do have done something with that term, right? So we'll say plus this this term here, which looks like delta u a naught p, right, evaluated on the boundary. And that equals zero. Call that equation six. One of the characteristics that we uh, mentioned about delta u is that it equals a zero identically on any sort of displacement boundary. So this last term is automatically zero anywhere there's a displacement boundary. So we don't really need to include that component. So we can write it as uh, just on the traction boundary. So say note uh, that delta u equals zero. This was by, uh, by definition uh, on whatever the boundary of u is. 
Okay, then the last term need only be over the boundary, the traction boundary. Right, we call that traction boundary gamma t. And we're also going to multiply through by a negative and rearrange. Okay. So we now have the integral from xa to xb of uh, del u comma x a naught times p. Uh, now I'm going to factor this out minus delta u times rho naught a naught b minus rho naught a naught u double dot dx right, let's put the bracket here minus delta u a naught p evaluated on the traction boundary equals zero equation seven okay so what is this this so what what i've got here is uh is actually the weak form, right? Okay, here's the weak form of the total Lagrangian equation. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit more specialization. Okay, we're going to define what that test function delta u is. Okay, so we're going to define it to be what's called a virtual displacement or test displacement. Okay. So if it's a virtual displacement, that means it's not real. Uh, it's just it's sort of a, a mathematical construct, right? Then it leads to a, a statement of virtual work. Okay. Okay. So this leads to the following virtual work terms. We can define the work done by the external loads. Call that delta W E X T. That's going to be equal to the integral from xa to xb. What are the external loads? Well, um, that's the work done by the body force and the and the traction boundary conditions, right? So uh, we can define that as uh, delta u times rho naught a naught b, right? dx uh, plus this boundary term delta u times a naught p evaluated on our traction boundary okay let's call that equation eight so that's the external work done notice that i i left i changed the sign right there was a negative sign and that's just because of how we define external work right we define it with a negative sign um how about the so this is let me just define that this is the virtual uh, external work Okay. Uh, we can define the virtual internal work. It's going to be given by, we're going to say delta W internal now for internal work, it's going to be equal to integral from XA to XB of this term uh, delta U comma X times A naught times P dx right so remember this this looks a lot uh, the derivative of x with respect to or the derivative of the virtual displacement with respect to x gives us a virtual strain multiplied times our stress right uh, that quantity is going to give us the the uh, internal work uh, done by the stresses right we did that in a previous lecture let's call this equation nine Okay, so finally now we're going to define the virtual kinetic work, or sometimes it'll be called the virtual inertial work, as follows. We'll say it's delta W kinetic will be equal to the integral from X of A to X of B times delta U rho naught A naught U double dot DX right call that equation 10 okay and then we can say that substituting 8 and uh, 9 and 10 into equation 7 
right, we end up being able to write that delta W internal, right, minus delta W external uh, plus delta W kinetic uh, is equal to zero, which we call, which we'll end up calling the the total virtual work, right? That must equal zero. Okay, so this, how we've written it here, where, and, and this makes sense, right? What it says is that the external work goes into internal work and kinetic work, and because we've defined the external work with a different sign, that's that must sum to zero, right? This is this is hopefully intuitive, right? And so we call this the principle of virtual work. And delta W is just the, the total virtual work, which must be zero, right? Because we have to balance the energy, okay? Note a couple things. We didn't make any specifications on um, the constitutive law, right? We didn't need, we didn't apply that yet, or we say anything about it. That's why we can use this for a nonlinear uh, solution, which is what we're trying to do. Well, I should call this equation 11, okay? Uh, the other thing I'll say is that it's, I, I would like to show you sort of the end from the beginning so that everything is motivated well. So I know you're probably going through here saying, well, I, I don't understand why we're doing this. Um, I would just say give it a lecture or two. Uh, we're going to now use this approach to um, begin to discretize and construct an FEA solution. Um, be, remember, when we constructed a linear elastic solution, uh, we had we, we could construct a set of linear um, equations that could be solved in a kind of a traditional fashion. So we're, we're coming at it from a little bit of a different angle because we're not going to make that assumption uh, as we go forward here. So uh, with that in mind, just, uh, I guess, um, stay in, stay, this, suspend your disbelief for a moment until we get to the end. And then if you still are stuck, uh, you know, come back through and ask questions. But um, this is just sort of developing the, the framework that we're going to apply to create the solutions that we need to for finite elements.